Well, welcome to It's About Time on Think Tech from our downtown studio at the core of Honolulu. I'm your host, Becky Sampson, a professional speaker, author, and coach. So we live in a society where we are being bombarded with so much that is causing the breakdown of the human ability to deal with stress. Most, most of what we stress about today wasn't in existence 100 years ago. You might have even pondered why the number of people struggling with suicide, <coughs> addiction, and depression are at an all-time high. Well, today we're going to be addressing all three and what we can do to make a difference in the lives of our loved ones. So joining me on the show today is Christian Jensen, the founder of the Resolving Sad Social Movement Foundation. So today we're going to be talking about suicide, addiction, and depression, and how that is affecting our society in a negative way. Welcome, Christian. <laughs> how are you? How are you? I, how are you in the cold? I know you're coming from Utah. Yeah, it's freezing, freezing, freezing. <laughs> I know. Yes. I feel really bad. I know uh, it's it's a lot colder here. I mean, it's a lot colder there than it is here by the ocean. So thanks for being willing to join us today on the show. And uh, thanks just for a little, me. yeah, just a little background, Christian. And I actually, we used to do a, a radio show together. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. We did a, it was called Rain Social Radio back probably, how many years? Thir well, what is it? 12, 13 years ago, maybe. Yeah, 2011. I think you were stalking me on Facebook. <laughs> yes. I was trying to figure out what, who you were and what you were all about. You were very interesting. Oh, <laughs> you're so awesome. Well, tell, tell everybody kind of who you are, because you're amazing. I mean, you do a lot of stuff. And one thing I love about you and your life is I'm always looking to see what, um, what social, social movements you get yourself involved in in helping people with making life better. So tell everybody kind of where you came from. You actually grew up here in Hawaii in the islands. I just found out. Well, I, I, I didn't grow up there my whole life. I, I'm from Utah originally, but I mm -hmm. went to uh, Lahaina Luna High School in 1982 as a sophomore in high school and uh, loved every minute of it after mm. the first two months of being completely harassed and, and um, almost dying every day. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, I love, love, love the people and, and I'm a huge, huge Hawaiian in my heart. So mm. love Hawaii. That's awesome. And so what, what got you, like, what's your history of, like, how did you get into what you're doing now in being so passionate about social, you know, just helping society in the world? Well, I've always been um, pretty involved in uh, protecting innocence. Um, mm. we, it kind of started back when Elizabeth Smart, I don't know if you remember the Elizabeth Smart searches, yeah. most people do. When she was abducted, we uh, had a foundation at the time, a nonprofit foundation. It's a 501c3, and we we donated all the computers and started up the started up all the searches for Elizabeth Smart back then, and just kind of learned as we go as we went. And some really good things stemmed from that, like the Amber Alert and mm. different things. So I've always been a an, an advocate and a proponent of people just in general reaching out and doing maybe even one or two percent better every day just mm. try to do a little more outside of their own life you know reach out and smile more mm -hmm. maybe uh just tell somebody that they look great i, I love your glasses i mm. love your dress or mm -hmm. you know buy somebody lunch behind you mm -hmm. in, in line at lunch I, i've just always been kind of a person who's been intrigued with with uh, the results of of being just simply being kind to people versus letting your own uh your own frustrations daily uh, you know we all have we're all busy and yeah. we we can all uh treat people like crap we can, we really can we can we can uh easily turn into exactly what we don't want to be mm -hmm. and i've always been somebody who's recognized that especially in myself um because i i'm the first i can be as I can be the guy mm -hmm. who's road raging on the road as fast as anybody. But I, mm -hmm. you know, when you make this conscious effort inside your own head, not in your own heart to just take a breath before mm -hmm. you react, that kind of thing, just miraculous things can happen when you take that one or two second beat before you react yeah. emotionally. Yeah. And so I've always been that kind of a person. 
um, always trying to learn and trying to do better. And then I started having children and now we've got mm. grandchildren mm. and, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm the perfect example of doing everything I said I'd never do as, as a kid. I'd say, I'm not going to say those things to my kids as, mm -hmm. as a parent, but I'm, <laughs> I, I'm turned, I've turned into the epitome of the, of the, uh, crazy dad who just speaks his mind. Yeah. So, but, but you also are very uh, involved in that's what I'm, one thing I love about you is you're very involved in the community, but you're also very involved in your family. And that's, that's kind of where your passions come from. Um, absolutely. Yeah. So what got you as, you know, as I kind of said in the intro, it's interesting is, is that our society is, it just seems like we are so much more stressed. Um, why do you think that that is? Um, I, I'm not somebody that likes to blame. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of promote when we, when we have certain issues in our lives, I like to say it's my fault, even when it doesn't make sense, even mm -hmm. when it, I, I can't see that it's my fault. I like to just take responsibility for it. And then I find the solutions through, through, uh, self accountability and responsibility. But mm -hmm. I will say that one of the things, the elements in, in life and the dynamic, some of the dynamics in life today compared to when I was growing up, I remember the first uh, cordless phone and the, mm -hmm. the first touch button phone without the mm -hmm. dialing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I recognize a huge disconnect. We're more, we're more mm -hmm. connected in society today than we ever have been in, in, at any other time in human history. Yeah, we're connected to millions of people, um, either consciously or unconsciously we're connected, mm -hmm. but that in itself with these cell phones, these, we, they're not even phones. They're far mm -hmm. greater than a cell phone. They're your, your, they're your existence. This little thing in front of your face all the time. Mm -hmm. That connection is absolutely disconnecting mm -hmm. all of us mm -hmm. at any real human level. And so we started this movement after, um, after recognizing a lot of different things that were happening that were bringing people suicide rates and depression and addiction and mm -hmm. anxiety and all these different issues we started uh recognize we recognize that nobody's doing anything about it i mean there's a lot of great yeah. organizations yeah. trying to be boots on the ground which we support but we just wanted to kind of create our own unique element in that to resolve sad this because the acronym suicide addiction and depression is mm -hmm. sad and we wanted to uh, be a part of that a cycle that is changing out out of the depression and the anxiety and all that so the disconnect what's keeping us disconnected is our massive ability to instantly connect right <clears throat> so when we when we have all of the technology that we have and we we're giving our six six year olds their own smartphone mm -hmm. and just having them go out on the internet um you know the average the average kid you know it's like i don't know the exact statistics i don't have them in front of me but you know by the time kids are six to eight to ten to twelve mm -hmm. you know in those areas they've seen uh, all this porn They've seen all these different things, you know, they, they're yeah. being desensitized. It's desensitizing our, our, our youth and our young people. And, I, and it, it, it's, it's really detrimental to um, feel so disconnected and so, so connected to the wrong kind of stuff at such yeah. fundamental times in their life when they should be being nurtured by parenting. Um, so the lack of parenting, the lack of, you know, I'm, and I'm speaking in general terms, this is mm -hmm. what I see. I see that the lack of parenting, the lack of spending quality time without cell phones, without computers, without technology, one-on-one -on -one connections with children, first well, and, and foremost. And I know when you, when you and I first talked about this several years ago, um, you know, because I've been in addiction recovery for what, oh, 12 years almost now? Um, I love that you brought up that it's, it's disconnection, right? Disconnection from support, disconnection from the things that matter, our values and our ethics, and those kind of things that keep us in the addiction, but also the depression and isolation that ends up with suicide. 
So Absolutely. I, yeah, and how to do, I mean, I know that sometimes it's our passions about things are driven by our pain. Um, have you had experiences with people in your life or you personally with any of those those Absolutely. issues? <clears throat> well, well, my, I'll, I'll give you one, one uh, story with my daughter. She's 23 now. You know her, mm -hmm. Sydney. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. Uh, this beautiful young woman now and incredibly strong, been through a lot. When, mm. when her mother and I were going through a divorce when she was eight years old, mm. it, it hit hard and fast. And uh, without all the details, just to make a long story short, she, she ended up uh, hanging herself around her neck mm. with a belt in, in her closet at mm. eight years old. Mm. And oh my gosh. we found out about this later. Mm -hmm. um, we weren't even home, and she told us about it a few year, few years later, and it just dropped my whole my whole everything mm -hmm. just dropped to the ground when I heard it. And um, the hanger broke, so she hit hit the floor, and then realized, man, that hurt, and that it was scary, and I mm -hmm. shouldn't be doing that. But so I, that started some th when I first heard that story yeah. from her. I started thinking about some things and, and realizing, started looking at the news and watching, um, looking at the things that the news wasn't sharing with us. And, and some of the things that I was finding that were just insane. I mean, there's yeah. so much anxiety in young people yeah. today. Anxiety, like panic attacks. Every other day, they're just, they, they'll call, you know, my daughter was calling me at 15 years old from school, failing out of school because of social pressures. Like I've just found out my friend had, had 30 likes on one post she did in, in 10 minutes. You know, when you and, and I, 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 yeah. or some, I, I couldn't believe it, what I was hearing. When you and I did the rain social radio many, many years ago, I mean, we talked a lot about social media, but even in this 10 years, so much has changed with people oh. feeling like I have to compare myself with somebody else. And then that does create this anxiety of like, I'm not good enough or I, I'm not. Why do they post and they seem so successful and happy and with a smile on their face and I'm miserable inside. And I think that that's really hitting our teens. It's also hitting the adults. Um, and I would oh. even say it's even hitting grandparents, right? It's hitting yeah, everybody. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. It's everywhere. I mean. And then you've got, you, you know, you have these, you have, you just have so many different dynamics that we have to deal with in socially speaking. And that, that's why we, we started this movement. You know, it's still, um, the movement's still in process yeah. and it's in, it's in a concept development stage, but we're, it's still out there. So we hope people pay attention to it, by the way. I'm going to plug it a little bit if I, if yeah, I might. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, it's resolving suicide addiction and depression page mm -hmm. on Facebook mm -hmm. and on Instagram. It's resolving sad. Mm -hmm. And we have a resolving sad.com is the website. And so, you know, we want to promote um, more exposure to more abilities to connect humanly, right. telling stories, telling things um, about, you know, that we, I just it, talked to a, a mom of a 33 year old boy, her boy took his life. He, who left, who left his own kids and mm. he, uh, he took his own life. And she, she said she didn't, hadn't breathed. She hadn't taken a breath in, in a year. And she saw uh. one of my videos, thank goodness. And she, it inspired her and she, she got a hold of me and wanted to go live and tell her story. Yeah, so that, that's, those, that's just a simple yeah. thing that we can do is just share each other's stories and hold each other's hands and share those stories and reach out and, and just become boots on the ground ourselves, yeah. which in turn, resolves our depression and the things that we're going through because we're actually in the service of even total strangers. Yeah. So hey, it's, Christian, a, it's a good lesson to be learned. Christian, we got to take a, a quick break. Okay. I want you to return and talk more about this of why we're passionate and, and really what can we do when we see signs of people that are struggling with that? Yeah. Can we come back from the break? Okay, so we're going to take a short break. Um, I'm Becky Sampson, and this is It's About Time on Think Tech Hawaii. We're talking to my dear friend Christian Jensen about suicide, addiction, and depression. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. I'm Jay Fidel of Think Tech. Our flagship energy show among the six energy shows we have is Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It plays every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Come around and see us. Learn about energy. Keep current on energy on thinktechhawaii.com. Aloha, everyone. I'm Christine Linders, and this is ThinkTech Hawaii. 
My show is Movement Matters, and this is a show brought to you to talk about how to get rid of things like your low back pain, scoliosis, TMJ dysfunction, ankle sprains, pretty much anything that you can do with your body or hurt your body. I am here to bring to you the cutting edge strategies that you can do right now easily on your own to help get out of pain and get back to doing what you love. Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Tune in Tuesdays at 11 a.m. every other week for Movement Matters. Aloha. Hi, we're back and I'm Becky Sampson and this is It's About Time. I'm talking with my very dear friend Christian Jensen about suicide, addiction, and depression. Uh, welcome back, Christian. I know this is, I, I, I apologize for going into the, to the, the break. It's such an important part because we were talking about suicide and people that um, see signs, right? Because that, there is, suicide is going up. I don't know what the statistics is, but suicide, addiction, it just seems to all be coming to a head. And I want to really talk to you specifically because you've experienced it, but also like that lady that had just reached out to you. What are some of the signs that uh, we should be looking for if there's people in our lives or even if we're feeling that way? Because I've, I've had moments in my life that I was suicidal as well, and I think I've talked to you about it before. It's just it, it's an overwhelming feeling, and I want to be able to provide some good, um, good stuff for, for the listeners and the people that are watching. So what, what should we be looking yeah, for? The, you know, <clears throat> there it's it's interesting because you there there used to be, you know, you always think there's signs um, mm -hmm. to look for, and there really aren't always signs. There, mm. it's actually rare that there are actual signs to be looking for. But if you do see obvious signs, like you know, the typical perfect example is is the kid that's always bullied in in yeah. high school as a teenager or even younger. Um, if, if you, if these, if a kid in high school or, or, or in younger ages of school, mm -hmm. if they notice somebody that doesn't have any friends mm -hmm. and they're sitting alone at lunch and they're being teased, yeah. that's a pretty good sign that these, that th this, that child, that person is going to be, uh, a little, you know, a little left out and it's just pretty, pretty common sense you'd think, but it's not always the case. And then, and that's really what resolving sad's about. It's, it's about promoting, mm -hmm. reach out. When you see that, when you see those signs, reach out and do something, a, a smile in a grocery store line mm -hmm. and say, Hey, you look great to somebody who looks sad, but look, it doesn't always have to, it can, it can be the same, uh, same issue with people who look like they've got it all together. Who's well, they're driving say, the Mercedes and they've got everything going and, yeah, you know. I, I was going to say to you, I was just about to say that, you know, you, we never know that when we smile at somebody, whether they look like they're having a good day or not, if it's going to make a difference. It's the same thing when you are very good at doing videos and sharing your stories, as you were talking about before the, the break, and you never know who's watching those and who's going to reach out to you for the help. But also, yeah. I would love to have you talk about, too, because I know for me, the signs for me is when I want to isolate and when I don't want to reach out for help. That's when I need to learn to, to reach out and say, hey, I'm not doing well right now. And um, to be able to have the courage to do that and know that you're heading down that direction. Because right, that I mean, can be a sign in itself. Just yeah. like you're, when, when you're in that state of mind, you're, when you go out into public or you get online or anything, you no one's going to know. They're going to think, yeah. oh, man, she's got it together. Yeah. When people look at me and they think I've got this perfect life, I've got this perfect marriage, i got this perfect mm -hmm. family. Because you know what? I don't want to share the crap. I don't. Yeah. I don't want to yeah. make this world a worse place. Mm -hmm. I want to make it a better place. So I choose to do my best um, mm -hmm. to to share the good moments, the good things that are happening and, and keep the positive vibe out there. But you know, we, we need to, we need to put a disclaimer on, on what mm -hmm. I just said there. We need to, we need to realize the reality behind the perfect person, the perfect yeah. life, the perfect business, the perfect everything. It's, there is no such thing. Yeah, redefining Stop comparing perfect, yourself right? to anyone else. 
Yeah, yeah. redefining perfect because it's, it is, I mean, the same thing, I, I know you experience this just like I do because people look at my life on Facebook and think, oh my gosh, Becky's living in Hawaii yeah. and everything's perfect and everything's great and she's in the ocean every day, you know, doing the TV show stuff. And it's, it is not, look, that's something that I've realized about life is that every single person struggles. Every single person yeah. feels stress. Every single person has to deal with a different level of stress. And the thing that for me, at least, that has helped the greatest is to have a team of people in my life that I know will love and trust me regardless of yeah. who I'm being at that moment that I can reach out and say, right, I need you to remind me who I am. Because right now, I'm, I'm a little crazy in my head, and life seems a little overwhelming for me. And, uh, yeah. and that's what drove me to my addiction. And, and my addiction was food addiction. But it, I always tell people when it comes to addiction, it doesn't matter what the addiction is. It's us trying to escape from the reality of what is and the emotions that we're feeling. We don't know what to do with them. So it's, right. yeah. So how can people kind of get involved in this movement that you're doing what can we do to help how can we like I, one of the things you talked about is telling our stories which i i really yeah. try to tell mine as truthful and honest as i can um without i don't i'm not into the drama either i don't think it's our job to just bleh, throw up every, uh, at everybody but i think it's impo important to be transparent but what are some it things is that important. You, it's healing yeah it's healing yeah when, when you can be honest and transparent you know, you don't have that being honest and transparent, transparent doesn't mean that you have to tell everything. Yeah. It just means you, you, you get the lion off your back. You know, mm -hmm. you get it, it, it really does uh, help when, when we can feel, feel enough strength, not necessarily comfortable, but mm -hmm. strength to decide to be transparent and share, you know, get, get everything off your back. And so like, just like that, uh, beautiful, uh, woman, Chris, who called in, mm. if you go to resolving sad suicide addiction and depression, Facebook page, you can scroll down and see her video, mm -hmm. um, with me. And, you know, she was just so grateful to be able to be heard. And it, yeah. it just a year of not breathing after your son takes his own life mm. is she, she just, she's thanked me and thanked me and thanked me. And it, it's, it isn't, about me it's yeah, just it's i'm just, just providing a platform on a platform that i don't even own i just started a yeah. page why don't what i'd suggest if pe if you have an idea to be part of a solution go start your own platform mm -hmm. or jump if you don't want to start a platform and take it that deep jump on resolving sad anytime and just share your video ask if you can have a um, a one-on-one -on -one live conversation with me or a pre-recorded conversation mm -hmm. so i can edit all the good pieces together <laughs> so when i put it up there it can be perfect yeah because a lot of people are insecure and don't and, and don't want to necessarily be live and and they're not as vulnerable as you and me and I know. so or crazy <laughs> right or crazy I, I crazy is good though yeah but i i love what you just said is we've got to start sharing our stories i think that's something in the last couple of years you know through social media but i think it's appropriate to be able to like for instance let me give you an example there was i don't know christian if you saw that facebook live i did a few weeks ago where i was literally drowning um emotionally from all the stress in my life with school coming back to school after 23 years oh yeah yeah and i i mean i was in near tears just going i don't know if i can do this like i really almost gave up but you know what was amazing because i was so vulnerable and honest about that i had i don't know if you saw the response on that people were like becky you yeah, can do it wow. i know you can and please know that if you're suffering again i i don't believe in just totally throwing up on people, but be real and say, hey, this is what I'm struggling with and and be willing to ask for that help. It doesn't have to be social media. It can be just somebody, a private friend or something like that. But but get right. out of isolation. That's where addiction is. That's where depression is. Um, and it's it it literally eats away at you, right? If you, know, you keep I, it to I, yourself. I, I have this saying that I, I think I heard it from someone before and I can't mm. find it. I don't know where it originally came from, but it's just, it's simple. And it helped me when I was going through a real, real deep, dark place mm. where I was, I did not want to be here. And, and I, mm -hmm. so we've all been there, yeah, you know, been there. and I, so I, 
it, it's the phrase is very simple and it was very it put something something permanently in perspective in my world and it's what you think of me is none of my business yeah isn't that it's pretty it's pretty it, you can take that in so many ways what you think of me is none of my business how many likes so, i have how many views i have is none of your business <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and what, what, what you what you think what you actually think mm -hmm. of me mm -hmm. is none of my business. So so that that is it freed me up. Yeah. Instantly when I really took that to heart, and and what what you know what I think of them, this it's the same way. Yeah. So if everybody could have that perspective, with respect, you know, with common sense. We'd, we'd have close to a perfect world. We, we wouldn't find yeah. ourselves being so depressed so quickly over nothing. Yeah. People are getting depressed and get it, and experiencing anxiety at these ultra levels like never before, never. And all because of technology, the facade of, of false sense of securities yeah. day in and day out, nonstop, 24-7, 365. And it's just, we're, our, our minds are just overwhelmed with too much information in and out and being having an entertainment value at it, whether it's media or literal entertainment it, it's we have that entertainment value in yeah. our face whether we want it or not constantly and so yeah. we do we can um put our phone down we can get off the screen we can yeah. go to the gym with no music playing in our we can go for a, a hike and believe it or not, you can even go on a hike without your cell phone. Yeah. You, you don't have to have your cell phone. You can go on a hike if you, you're allowed. Yeah. And hey, you Christian, won't believe how healing that is. I, I know we are just about out of time and I wanna make sure people know how to get involved in what you're doing. Cause you've got a couple things. You've got, you've got your uh, CBD oil that I've, yeah. I've tried, it's amazing. And you've also got the, the movement and that's, you're tying both of those together. So really quickly in like yeah. 30 seconds, 45 seconds, tell okay. me, tell me how those connect and how they can get I'll a hold of you. I'll sum it up. I, yeah. So we, we, we started a, a byproduct of this movement, um, is a, our own, uh, it's called Philoa. It's, it's Philoa is a Samoan phrase, meaning do it or do you just don't hesitate. Don't think go. Yeah. And we, it's a, we have a CBD, a, a water soluble, highly absorbable, certified pharmaceutical grade CBD. Which is so super we yummy. started our own company. <laughs> Just yeah, so you know. Thank you. And we started our own company to support the movement. Mm -hmm. um, and so this, this, even in the pamphlet there, it's resolving sad. And we hope people will go to the Facebook page and the Instagram and follow us. We're just starting out. We don't, I probably don't even have a hundred people. But we, we, the concept's been developed uh, for about three years now in concept. And we're working with, you know, we're jumping on with uh, people like, we just talked to Sylvester Stallone and, and uh, a couple weeks ago, and he loved awesome. the concept and a lot of influencers. So we'd love all the support we can get. And then if you want to buy the product, just go to phyloa.com and, and phyloa uh, buy the product, try it. And, and it helps. We, have, we did CBD because of the one thing. It, it absolutely, if you're, if it's a real product, which we can control and verify and guarantee mm -hmm. a lot of products out there don't even have any CBD in it. So yeah, awesome. we, we wanted to control our own. So that that's about it. Well, thank you so much, Kristen. You are a dear, dear friend. We've been on this crazy journey together. <laughs> so thanks for, for coming on today and sharing your wisdom and thank you for what you do to help and support other people that are struggling in their life. So. Thank you, thank Absolutely. you. Okay, so thank we're, out of, you. we're out of time and we're gonna have to wrap that up. I'm Becky Sampson with It's About Time on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking to my dear friend Christian Jensen about suicide, addiction, and depression. And just know that there is help out there if that's something that you struggle with. So thanks for joining us today. And thank you to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who makes this show possible. And of course, I'll see you on Wednesdays for more of It's About Time. On ThinkTech, I'm Becky Sampson. Mahalo, everyone.